On this video, we'll be migrating a Paxton system that's hosted on a Windows Server 2012 to a Windows Server 2016. The previous version of Paxton is currently on version 4 and we'll be migrating the database to a Paxton Net2 Pro system that's on version 6.5. So the first thing that I did was is install version 6.5 on the new server that we'll be migrating the database to. One thing to know is, is during the installation process is to install Paxton Net2 Lite, not Pro. Um, when you do the database migration, it will automatically upgrade your license from Lite to Pro. So on the first instance, do not install the Pro version, install the Lite version. The next step is to back up the Paxton database on the old server. Um, it's fairly straightforward. However, it does take some time to back up your database. It will stop all the Net2 services during the process. Um, one thing to know is on my video, I have speeded up the process um, just to make the video shorter. To start backing up the Net2 database, you need to open up Net2 server configuration utility. Once it's open, select the database tab and then select the create copy button. It will prompt you uh, that it will be creating a copy of your database. Select yes and let it start its process. Once it's completed uh, backing up your database, it's going to prompt you to save the zip file somewhere. So choose a destination that you can access or the new server can access. But for the purpose of this video, I stored it on a temp folder and then just copied it across to the new server. The next step now is to uh, disable the Net2 nodes on the old server. Select the TCP IP nodes tab. After you've selected that, you will see all the nodes that you have. Um, select none. Um, once you've done that, select apply. It will prompt you to say that it will need to restart the services for the changes to become active. One thing to know is if you have a USB setup, then you will need to plug your USB in and then deactivate the endpoints and then restart the services. However, in this instance, we don't have a USB setup. So it's just a case of select the nodes select none and then select none. the next step now is to import the paxton database from the old server to the new for the purpose of this video i've already copied across the net2 database zip file from the old server to the new and just stored it on the c temp folder to get started you need to just open up net2 server configuration utility once it's open select the database tab and then select import copy and then select the net2 database zip file that we've created uh, or in my case I've copied across uh, to the C temp folder. The next step now is to activate the Net2 nodes that we had disabled on the old server. However, in this instance on the new server, we are now going to reactivate it. One thing you may have noticed at the beginning of the video is that an error message had appeared. 
the reason why is, is because um, I, I did not close the net two configuration utility because it was looking at the previous database which has now been deleted because uh, we restored a database so I'll close the net two server configuration utility and then restart it once you've done that select the TCP IP nodes tab and then select all the um, endpoints and then select that apply button. It's gonna give the similar message in the sense that it will need to restart the services in order for it to be active again. Select yes, and then wait for the nodes to be active again. This does take a little while depending on how many nodes you have within your environment. Um, so yeah, it's just a case of waiting until the process has completed. The last step now is the node will start updating its firmware. Uh, you'll notice that the firmware is currently on 5.03 and once it's completed, it will be on version six. Uh, however, one thing you'll notice on the video is that I will select in the endpoints and then at that point, the firmware tab will update itself. So it would go from up to date to update pending and then firmware updating. I waited for a while and then I selected the endpoint again and then it would say it's it's been, well, it's up to date. Um, so it does take a little while. It's probably one of the longest process throughout the migration. Um, once it's complete, your migration is complete. And yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care. Bye.